And so just a quick little intro to the pools, right? So this is a, um, I'm hoping what you guys get out of it is maybe a new way to practice how to get better at pools. And also uh, just when you have a bad start, it's, it's not the end of the world. Uh, your confidence just absolutely drains down, right? You ha I had a lot of very negative thoughts. I was like, what am I going to do? What if, what if I go 06, right? And all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, uh, what, what do I do? Uh, very dark thoughts, right? You even go, uh, in my mind, I was like, oh my God, if I go 06, I'm quitting fencing. Uh, this is the worst. And it, it's so easy to get so self-destructive. And for me personally, is I had to, it's not necessarily that I had to talk my, to myself out of it because that wasn't good. I, I talked to my coach. Uh, and I just ask for a lot of advice, but just don't, for me, it's about not letting yourself sink down to that hole where it's just a, an absolute spiral of negativity. Go talk to people. The people around you that are helping you are happy to help you. They want to see you succeed, or at least I hope they do. Uh, so just, tr and then if you are alone, try to just focus on a positive. Just tell yourself, when I want to do something, I'm going to go do it, right? So for me... The go moment was, uh, I think, it was when I fencing the Korean guy, I just said, I'm going to flesh, and when I do, it is going to be glorious. And I did, and lo and behold, it was just absolutely magical. Uh, and then, if you're um, looking for ways to practice your pools, but at the same time, you want to practice your 15s, whenever you fence a 15 with someone in your club, make those first five points, just life or death, right? It's a... It's a pool bout. You want to win that pool bout. You're practicing for that pool bout. And then once you get past the five, you're either practicing holding the lead or obviously you're in a hole and you need to win this bout now. All right, so just a few little things. So let's check out my pools and I hope you guys enjoy this. Thanks, uh, thanks for watching. All right, so we're going to do a little uh, rundown on my pools. Uh, and unfortunately what happened is I had a... I had a pretty bad start um, the night before I broke my favorite weapon, uh, which really was unfortunate. And on as I got into my first bout with Lugo, I never fenced, but I knew he was coming off a pretty decent uh, tournament in Sochi. I mildly overthought how, but yeah, I really thought he'd be more intense, but he just kind of waited and eventually I did nothing until he did one action and then... As you'll see in the bout coming up, all I really did was jump around and wait for something to happen instead of actively just trying to make something happen. And this was where my first real mistake was. And then on top of that, um, my weapon didn't pass the gauge, which had passed right uh, before my warm-up match. So that's on me. I should have checked again. I should have checked again after uh, that warm-up match, right before the pool. So that that was just. Uh, really unnerving so I was like oh my god two things going wrong then I tried to shake it off and as you'll see as much as I could try to shake it off uh, it was a rough bout so let's uh, check it out <laughs>
As you saw, not the greatest bout, a lot of doing absolutely nothing, right? I just stood there and I waited. Uh, you could argue that I was kind of close to getting that first top hit, but after that, uh, 30 seconds left, probably even less. You try something, fails, so, such is life. So I decided to just let the time run out and hopefully not absolutely murder my indicator. After that, I had a Koshman from uh, Ukraine, and he, he's not bad, obviously. Like, none of these fencers are bad. Uh, but he just completely caught me off guard right at the beginning and again when I fix my gauge uh, on my good weapon as it were uh, What happened was is uh, I must have Contracted my uh, big spring again, and then my weight didn't pass so two times in a row my Quote-unquote favorite weapon at the time was not passing so big no-no from me there and I was already a little frazzled, and there I just get picked apart. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do something. The one time I started an attack, I, I believe it was a double. So check that bout out. But it, I'm warning you, it's uh, not great fencing on my part. So uh, let's uh, go check it out. And we'll see you back after that bout. After this bout, I was um, I was so annoyed at myself, right? I even told my fiance, I was like, just give me two minutes alone right now, please. Uh, I just didn't want to see anyone. And coach went up to me and he you know, literally said, uh, spend half your time analyzing. But when it comes a time to do your own stunts, there's absolutely, like, you just, I just don't pull the trigger. 
So the next one, I knew I had a Norwegian guy coming up. Um, he he also also lost his bouts, so I knew that I this had to be my pick me up. Uh, he was very defensive, so I knew that if I pushed him but stayed you know ready on my legs, I was gonna get something. Uh, and then I did. I ended up fainting, get a nice top hit. So check that out. And then one mistake, although I'm glad it was a mistake because in the sense that I'm the one who decided to do something. I picked an action, right? He rushes, I get uh, I get caught, and then after that I just uh, I just say, you know what, let's go for the sure thing. I just run away. So not the cleanest win, but it was a win nonetheless, which kind of finally, you know, just kind of gave me a bit of confidence. Uh, what was important for that is I just told myself, do you want to go home saying you tried something, or do you want to go home and give it your all, right? I did two things that just changed the mindset. Uh, something that also helped me is I went to splash some water on my face. I just, I had a two, three, three matches, I believe. I had quite a big break, so I knew I had time to run to the washroom, just splash an absolutely cold water on my face to get the reset. So uh, this was the beginning coming back. Uh, check it out. Pero fue intencional. Ah, fue un reflejo.
right, so there we take the win. Uh, after that, I had the Korean lefty French grip, and I personally am very comfortable fencing the French grips. So on that, I told myself, you see an opportunity, you take it. You just go, and you assert yourself. And right away, as soon as I landed that first flesh, just adrenaline pumping. Uh, and there, I was like, wow, I don't think this guy has a parry. So I just kind of instantly try to capitalize on that before he gets wise. Uh, I got a little cocky on one of his hits, and I said, just go, and he actually bodies me. Uh, after that, I was maybe a little too overzealous, throw my mask, landed on the, uh, I was too happy, landed on the other strip. Uh, so I got a tough but fair warning from the referee. So remember, be happy, but uh, keep your cool. So on that one, uh, good win, and then uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Ramirez, very tall, blade-heavy fencer, and right from the first hit, he just rushes me down. And all I told myself is, I cannot let that happen again. Uh, so from there, anytime he started something, I knew I wanted to be in his face. And then, uh, thankfully at my club, I have a guy who fences uh, very similar to him. So I knew that if I got him to look, I had a chance to go get a single on the leg. And then from there, it was just about... It's not necessarily that I had to be the initiator, it's just that I couldn't let myself get initiated on. 
And as soon as I got through that, I was able to snag out some, uh, some good points. And there we are. At that point, I was really stoked. Uh, at least, you know, 3-2, you're guaranteed to make it through. And from there, the last bout was a, was a good one. This Japanese guy was very clever. And let's see what happens. Right, and then I just beat Ramirez. Uh, I'm stoked. Uh, this, and I know I have one more Japanese guy left. He looked pretty young, but he was fast. Uh, but I saw a lot of... Uh, I, I knew he kind of favored six. So I said, I told myself as soon as he preps an eight, I know it's a six. So I gave myself a good flesh. 
Uh, watch my point to uh, tie it up 4-4. Like, oh my god, even, even I thought he hit that, to be honest. Like, it should have maybe been a double. Uh, but probably one of the closest counterattacks of my life. Uh, so 4-4, four, four, but he did a very good job of adapting. As soon as I did the first one, he never gave me that chance again to really go get that flesh on the 6. And on that note, um, that pool ends 3-3. Three, three. It's not bad, not great. At least we make it through. So I was like, at least I know I can take my chances in 15s, where I know I'm much better than 5s. <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you. 